the second match running. And Fulham get a breakthrough. Well, there's no doubt that Fulham have been better in the second half. It just fell nicely for him. Sat up, didn't hesitate to put his foot through it. It was Pierce initially, goes for the jump. Quidru, sorry. Goes through the legs. Carson gets a hand on it but can't deflect it wide. I've been fortunate with, you know, the coaches that I've been a part of uh, here in England, with Moisey first and, and then with Cookie. Um, finding my feet, understanding um, what's going on with the team and, and um, I think that, that uh, players around me have always been of such high quality that for me it's first getting my, my feet on the ground and then hopefully progressing like I, like I said before, it's about learning and trying to get better. The best professional I've ever played with. I mean, I'm only 22, I was talking like I'm 40, but the man's just, he's a joy to, I learn off him, you know, has preparation and training. And I think people think our job's only on a Saturday, but you should come and see Brian training in the week. He train, he practices his head in every day. His volleys, he's 34, 35, he's the last off the training field, always practicing his finishing. And he's a joy and he's someone that I want to emulate and do some of the things that he's done in his career. But it's turning from a bad start into a bit of a crisis, and Klaus Jensen is in here! That's 2-0! And that is a big, big moment for a player who's had injury nightmares for a year. He scores! That's why Chris Coleman has a smile all over his face. Well, he finds so much space, he just breaks into this inside right channel. As the ball goes back, I think it's Diawara, just gets out of position. It's a great ball. And when you get a bit of a quality pass, it beats a defender in behind you. And you've got someone like this on it. I thought we'd just got away from him. A toe on it. It's a toe finish in the end. Takes it away from the defender, Diawara. Toe punts it into the roof of the net. And that's an excellent finish. Andy Reid. Horaiderson. Now Marcus Bent. Fallen quite nicely for Thomas, who goes down. It's all a bit clumsy, and Charlton are back in it. Poked into the corner of the net by Darren Bent. No better taker potentially than Petrov, with a bit of pace. Davis. Petrov, goal side of Rossinha. Penalty. Rossinha's argument that he did no more than lean on Petrov. Chris Foy thought that was enough. I was thinking, what, what's going on, you know? I mean, first of all, you have the handball against Chelsea and then you have the Stylian Petrov incident, which every, everyone knows it wasn't a penalty, you know? But you start to, every time the ball goes in the box, then you think you, you, you're worried about making a challenge and things like that, and it's hard mentally to get on with it. Well, what a big decision this is for the referee, because I think what he's saying is, it is a foul here when Petrov and Messina come together. Petrov doesn't actually go down, and that's really what I think will upset the Fulham players, but I believe there was a foul. I believe Messina is trying to obstruct Petrov to get forward just there where the contact's made. He, he actually uh, apologised to me afterwards. He said, if it's not, if it wasn't a penalty, I'm sorry. He thought I'd pulled his shirt or something, but it was actually the other way around. He was pulling my shirt, and I thought he was going to give me the free kick. But, I mean, people, referees are only human beings, you know. They're not going to... I don't go out and play football, certainly, and get everything right 100%, so you can't expect referees to do the same. Barry! Oh! Now that is a penalty at Aston Villa Lee. Kedru. Radzinski. Jensen. On for Rossinha. Radzinski. Faced by Hughes. He's done well to deliver. Radzinski must be. Equaliser. Moritz Volz. 
right at the start of first half stoppage time. Moritz Moltz scores his first Premier League goal in a Fulham shirt. Well, it's probably the first time they get the two wide plays in advanced areas, and Vizitsi goes ever so well here because he's held up, he digs across out to the far post, and look at Volz unmarked on the far post. He's almost just standing there waiting for the opportunity. This is Rosinski, just dips it onto his left foot and hangs it up to the back post. And you see Volz is unmarked and talks about that concentration, just hit the target. Well, he does everything right here. Sonson, no chance. This is Leighton Baines. And what a good run from the fullback. And goes down on the edge of the box, convinced there's a foul by Knight. Referee plays on, Boyce out to Teal. Teal away from Kadru. Is he onside, Boyce? Yes, he is. And the Amy gets a touch, camera's there, and it's hacked off the line. And the referee's given a penalty. We're going to have the opportunity here. After piling on the pressure, watch the referee's verdict. Well, he's given the penalty for the block on the line, Gary. Give... There's a yellow card as well. Look, the defence is a little bit deep. Boyce is not offside, gets his cross in. Partially cleared by Naomi. And there you can see Zach Knight, his arm come out. And I would have to say that that was going in the goal had it not hit, hit his arm. And it has to be a penalty. There you see it come down. Out came the arm. And I'm afraid it would be a penalty. It's Lanzat against Naomi. And Lanzat's hit the crossbar. Another chance, goes a begging for Wigan. Well, I think Paul Jules will be too pleased with this little pause and stutter in the run. There he goes up on the bar and over. Knight wants to hit McCulloch with his clearance. Oh, it breaks for camera. Mistake by Kadru, and camera's in here and scores! And at last, Wigan take the lead after missing chance after chance. They finally scored. And it's Henri Camera with his third goal of the season. Up to ninth and keeping good company, Fulham were looking up rather than down. Jensen deflected! 1-0! And it's Klaus Jensen. Well, I've never thought in a million years after 65 minutes we'd be sat there saying that Fulham would be leading 1-0. But he's the one player on the pitch for Fulham, certainly. He's got that little bit of quality. But he needs a deflection. I think Tim Howard has this all the way if it doesn't take a deflection. It's not a fantastic strike, but that just loops it up over the top of him. And that little bit of luck that Fulham need... They've got... When Antti Niemi left Southampton for Fulham, he was among the hottest goalkeeping properties in the Premiership, and he was at his spectacular best at Fratton Park. Being away from home, Pompey creating most of the chances and get a point, yeah, it's definitely one of the best memories from this season. Loire, Loire. Oh, what an effort! And a terrific save by Antti Niemi to match. Taylor delivers. Carnu! What a save by Niemi! How on earth did he keep that out? Superb. You know, it's great having a goalkeeper like him behind you. You know, when you're 1 0 up and you know the team that you're going to come under pressure at some point, you know you've got a top class goalkeeper behind you who's going to, he's going to pull out saves when it really matters, and he's done that this season. Great goalkeeper, probably one of the best I've played with. Um, good lad. Um, bit of a, I don't know, she's a bit of a weirdo as well. <laughs> Got a few reinforcements coming up now. Zat Knight, Ian Pierce, Carlos Bocanegra, and Frank Kudrou. 
Jensen, good pace on the corner, Knight got the touch and it's in. Fulham have the lead at Fratton Park, a ground where they have never won in the Premiership. And Zach Knight gets his first goal of the season. All about the delivery for me though. Put in fantastic delivery, fantastic ball. Zach Knight just gets a, a head on the ball, it takes a slight deflection as well for Savanovic. And before David James can get there, it's in the back of the net. Full credit to Fulham, they've hung on in now. Great delivery, Zach Knight gets a, enough on the ball and it ends up in the back of the net. Yet another examination of Fulham. This time Campbell got a touch on it, Niemi gathers on the line. But he doesn't hold on. Fulham protests, but the goal has been given. Looks like Andy Cole got the last touch, but Fulham are fuming as Portsmouth finally get the goal. Four draws and a win from their last five away games, and then Fulham went to the City of Manchester Stadium. Good flick, great flick! Karate! Breakthrough for Manchester City! And City pressing up man for man all the time. They've stolen possession, they've got a break on here, they've got Samaras! Karate makes it two! Jensen curls it over. Weaver gets his hands to it, that was the important thing. If the goalkeeper comes, he's got to make contact. And now there's a chase on. There's a real chase on. It's one against one, it's two against one. It's a chance for number three. And how about that? Joey Barton for Manchester City. Bubba Jopp. Helgerson, chance here for Fulham, Collins, John! Well, he's maintained this wonderful scoring record at the City of Manchester Stadium. And with around about half an hour to go, Fulham have pulled one back. Little touch there, well taken. Steve Copples Reading had surprised everyone with their confident start to the season. Early ball from uh, Little. And uh, there's a chance if the early cross in towards Doyle. It's Doyle. He brought down penalty. Ian Pearce. Red card. Fulham down to ten men in the 16th minute. And Doyle is the penalty taker. And he scores, and Reading lead at Craven Cottage. Second early corner for Fulham. Arsenal thought to be vulnerable from set pieces. And that's proof. A brilliant headed goal. McBride celebrates. The faintest of touches, and Lehman comprehensively beaten. Six minutes gone, Fulham in the lead.